I feel like I just got out of an abusive relationship. Hello, my beautiful boring people. My name is Victoria and I've already tried to film this video once and it was a steaming pile of garbage because I didn't script anything. So I actually wrote stuff down this time so I can talk to you about The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I'm gonna read my notes. This was published on February 26th, 2019, so this year, fairly new book. It was published by Bloomsbury Publishing and has 848 pages. She thick. She very thick. And pretty. So now that we have a little info on the book, let's read the dust jacket cover to see what the blurb says. A world divided. A queendom without an heir. An ancient enemy awakens. The house of Barathnet has ruled Innis for a thousand years. Still unwed, Queen Sovereign the Ninth must conceive a daughter to protect her realm from destruction, but assassins are getting closer to her door. E. Durian is an outsider at court. Though she has risen to the position of lady-in-waiting, she is loyal to a hidden society of mages. Ede keeps a watchful eye on Sovereign, secretly protecting her with forbidden magic. Across the sea, Tane has trained all her life to be a dragon rider, but is forced to make a choice that could see her life unravel. Meanwhile, the divided east and west refuse to parley, and forces of chaos are rising from their sleep. Is the dust jacket accurate to what will happen in the book? Yes, it is a decent teaser. However, with the way that the teaser is written, I would say that it pitches the book as much more of a high fantasy with a focus on the fantasy and completely leaves out that there is any romance in this book, which there is. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting or currently what I wanted, which may affect how I view this book, but we'll get into that later. So there are a rather ridiculous amount of characters in this book, as you would expect in such a thick boy, perhaps, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just a lot to try to keep track of. Thankfully, Samantha Shannon has included a cast of characters list and description in the back of the book if you're like me and you got a little bit confused with what was going on and you just need to refresh your memory. It's, it's all there for you in the back. It's under Persons of the Tale which starts on page 805. Now with that being said, there are four different regions included in this book, North, South, East, and West, with a predominant focus on what's happening in the East and the West. It is also told from the point of view of four different storytellers, which are Arteloth, aka Loth, heir apparent to the wealthy northern province of the Leus in Innis, and the estate of Golden Birch, elder child of Lord Clarent and Lady Annis Beck, brother of Margaret Beck, and closest friend of Sovereign the Ninth of Innis. Our next character is Idaz Du. I don't specifically know how to pronounce these names. There's two different ways this could go, but um, this is how it sounds in my head. Idaz Du Zala Uknara. It could also be Idaz Du Zela Uknera. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with Zala Ugnara, also known as Eid Durian. Okay, can we, can we just take a second to appreciate the fact that this is the Priory of the Orange Tree and it has a character with the last name of Durian? Just saying. An initiate of the Priory of the Orange Tree, currently posing as ordinary chamberer in the upper household of Sovereign the Ninth of Venice. She is a descendant of Siati Ugnara, who was the closest friend of Cleolin Anjanyu. Next we have Nicolas Rus, an anatomist and alchemist from the free state of Mentadin and former friend of Edward II. He was banished by Sovereign the Ninth of Innis to Arisima, the last western trading post in Seiki. And lastly, we have Tane, a Seikinese orphan who was drafted into the Houses of Learning as a child to train for the High Sea Guard, principal apprentice from the South House. This section also goes and divides the characters by where they're from and goes into the background of their stories. As you can see, there are several pages dedicated to the characters, if you're so inclined to go look at that. Now let's get into how I feel about this book. And I will start by establishing my rating system and, you know, what my different stars mean. So 
five goes to books that I absolutely love and definitely plan to reread. Four goes to books that I thoroughly enjoyed but may not necessarily reread. Could be, could not. I don't know, it just depends on how I feel about it later. Three stars is for middle of the road books. Unless I get a weird itch, I'm probably not going to reread it. Two is for books that I just really don't enjoy and just may not have been for me. You know, everybody has their tastes and you're allowed to not like books and you're allowed to like books and just find stuff that you enjoy because reading is what we're all about here. And one is reserved for books that I actively hate which hate is a strong word for me and like there would just have to be a lot wrong with a book for me to give it a one star. I've never run across a pure one star for me so if we ever get there you'll find out but I'm not even sure if I would finish a one star book for myself because I may just DNF it and not put myself through it. I don't know. Now that I've defined how I plan to rate books, let's talk about what rating I gave this one. I feel like I just got out of an abusive relationship with this book because sometimes I was thoroughly into it and I didn't want to put it down and other times I kind of wanted to chuck the book across the room because of what was happening and I was weirded out by a few places and there were some times when I was reading it and I'm like man am I even gonna continue this because I'm not sure I like where this is going but I went ahead and finished it anyways. I can't specifically talk about why I really didn't like some sections of the book because that's spoilers, that would be plot points. I'm trying to do this as spoiler-free review so I'm just not gonna go there. But I overall I ended up giving it three stars because I did really enjoy some parts of it. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I also love that it has gay, bi, and or pan. I'm not sure which because it isn't explicitly stated. We have a character that goes from sharing a bed with a male to sharing a bed with a female. So define that as you will. And it also has lesbian representation in it. So cool! I like that it has different representation in it. Awesome! However, there were some ways in which romance was used that I didn't really care for. They, Some of the relationships broke my willing suspension of disbelief, which I had established with this book, because of how the character changed when in a relationship. So one of the characters has a lifelong goal it's well established in the beginning of the book. I was super excited for this character and to see how they would achieve this lifelong goal. But as soon as this character got into a relationship, it was like that goal didn't really exist that much anymore or wasn't as important as how I had been led to believe it was to them because there wasn't, like there was still internal struggle, but it didn't feel like as nearly strong of an internal struggle as I would have thought it would had based on how adamant the character seemed at the beginning of how much they wanted to reach their goal. The story also changes to where this character can achieve that goal, but there isn't a whole lot of struggle associated with that achievement, so it just didn't feel as genuine to me. Maybe I just want more struggle and strife, who knows? It just felt weird to me, okay? And that's just that's my opinion. <laughs> it, it just felt too happy. It felt too coincidental for some of the things to happen that the way they, they did. I am also a bit annoyed that this book is building up the entire time to this evil that is coming back into the world and what's going to happen when this evil returns and how are they going to defeat this evil. But the character that is about all this evil only shows up in about, oh, I don't know, the last 100, last 70 pages and doesn't stick around that long. He gets vanquished really fast. <laughs> I mean, yes, the book was all leading up to this character getting vanquished anyways, hopefully, but it felt like a letdown at that point. Like, again, I'm expecting more of a struggle, more of a story of what's going on. This character has been built up and built up to feel like it's just gonna be the end of the world, it's gonna be awful chaos. There's no stopping it except for this one little thing and they may or may not be able to pull it off. And then you get there and it just happens so fast. 
I didn't expect it to happen that fast. Another personal problem that I had that a lot of other people did not have was keeping up with the characters, who they were, when we're talking about where they are. It, it, I was just a little bit of a hot mess in the beginning. I didn't feel like each character was well established before moving on to the next character and the next part of the storyline. By midway through the book, this is definitely resolved and I didn't have problems following the characters, but maybe I was just tired. I don't know. A lot of people didn't have this problem. I just felt like it skipped around a little bit too much for my taste in the beginning. Oh, also some of the characters in the beginning can go by two or three different names and by the end of the book they can go by four or five different names. So I kind of wish I had kept track of that on a piece of paper so that I could share that with you now so that it would be easier on you later, but I didn't and I'm not planning on rereading this book to find that information. But yeah, you, you may want to write down the character names as you're going through the book because they do change to some degree. And I didn't feel like those names were necessarily super well established before they started being used interchangeably. And like I said, I haven't seen a whole lot of reviews where other people have had this problem. Maybe it's just a me thing. <laughs> so who is this book for? If you're looking for a slow burn romance mixed with high fantasy that focuses somewhat on the characters and takes a few unexpected turns. I would say that you would like this book. I personally didn't care for where the turns went and for some of the characters that were there, and, and that's just a personal preference. You may end up really loving this book. A lot of people do, but I don't know. If, like, maybe when I'm in my mid-30s or mid-40s, I'll be like, you know, remember that time when I read a high fantasy book when I was really loving high fantasy? and it just didn't ring true with me, maybe I'll read it at a different stage in my life and try it again. Because, I mean, your tastes do change with age. Maybe I'm just not in the mood for it right now. I don't know. But anyways, that's my two cents on the matter. Thanks for joining me. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Totally open for some good discussion. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!